Hi, Steve Allen here from We Thrive Together. Today we are talking to Tony to learn a little bit more about some different professionals that work in, uh, obviously, disability services. One of the acronyms or one of the terms you might have heard is a DSP. Tony, can you tell us what is a DSP? A DSP, uh, it stands for Direct Support Professional, but in all honesty, it's just an extension of the individuals that we serve. Um, one of the biggest things that we try to do in this field is always to remain as helpful as possible. Now, as a DSP, you can be responsible for simple things such as maybe making meals, but it can be as complex as into, you know, full body care if someone cannot move, speak or et cetera. There is um, an unlimited amount of uh, disabilities in the world and what we try to really focus on as a DSP is not the limitations, but how we can outsmart those limitations, if that makes sense. Um, we don't want anyone to say because they can't walk that they can't do a marathon or um, since they can't see, they can't be a part of some kind of special event that can visually be heard if that makes sense to you. Um, so a DSP is just an extension of a person to my, in my eyes. And that makes a lot of sense. So if you look at, maybe what are some of the characteristics that you would like to see in a DSP? Oh, that is a great question. I think one of the best ones is truly uh, uh, happiness. It's, uh, you know, who likes to be around someone who is just grumpy all the time? Um, and unfortunately, a lot of our individuals, they have to take on the presence of someone if they're having a bad day, if they're having uh, marital problems, if they're having problems with their children. They are subjected to a DSP's everyday life. So us being able to... I don't want to say bottle it because you should definitely talk to somebody if you feel like things are overwhelmed, but we have to almost do that customer service type of thing where you kind of, you bite down on it right now and then you handle it separately. Because although we at Friends for Life and other agencies like ours, we like that friendly and family relationship, but we, we have to remember that this is still a job when it comes down to it. And you mentioned that, you know, obviously you have some basic characteristics that you're looking for, you know, uh, in an individual that can do that role. But for a DSP, what type of education do you need? Well, you know what? I am a happy high school dropout. <laughs> I got my GED at 17. And from there, I was just in the workforce. Um, so by the time I just had my 37th birthday. So I've actually been working more than I have done anything. But right now with the state, um, there are high school diploma passes that you don't necessarily have to get. So if you don't have the high school diploma or the equivalency, there are ways to get around it to still service and help in this field. But aside from that, we will give you all of the basic trainings typically through orientation. And that can be as in-depth um, as medical, um, uh, medical skills, even medication administration. Uh, you can learn a lot in a very short amount of time, but if you stay in the field, you will almost feel as if you're a nurse or have some of those characteristics by the time you spend a good five years in. And what's interesting is I, I keep hearing people say that there's like a DSP crisis or shortage. Is that true? I mean, is there yes. a bunch of opportunities for individuals to jump into this career path? Yes. Um, right now, the healthcare field in general is a wonderful area to experience any kind of growth in. Um, the, the scary part right now is if you're not careful and you're a young person getting in, you can get overstimulated very quick. And then you're like, oh, this isn't for me. This isn't for me. So it's always a trick trying to um, encourage people to take those risks. But keeping them in their comfort zone so we don't scare them away. Um, the, the, the finances behind the state and the federal government has not caught up in Medicaid funding um, along with the rest of the world. So this has been a field that has been showing very, very little growth financially for a very long time. But I do believe that we're due and there's a lot of people out here nowadays 
that are pushing the agenda for more legislation changes to create those um, disparity wealth gaps. And it sounds like that if you could get into the industry uh, as a DSP, there might be some big opportunities for growth. Is that true? Yes, it is. Um, even with myself, uh, I was very, very, how can I put it? I wasn't expecting to go as far as I did with this in the very beginning, um, but something clicked in me and I was able to always make a contribution no matter who I was servicing and caring for. Um, so that really helped me understand that my purpose is more in line with what I can bring value to. And a lot of the individuals that we care will let you know if you're bringing value to their lives or not, or their state plans or their ISPs, individual service plans will definitely stick out um, for if those changes are progressive to the individual. So it really sounds like if you like helping people, that you want to make a difference in somebody's life, if you want to get into a really meaningful and rewarding career that maybe doesn't take a ton of um, educational certifications or whatnot, but obviously there's some on-site and in-person training with an employer that potentially looking at a role for a DSP might be a great opportunity. Is there anything else that you also think people should know about being a DSP? Yes, I, I think everyone um, should have a part in their community to understand what a DSP does and realize that their profession can be ever growing. It can always change. It can always progress. So this is not a, a field of work that I would think an average person would not grow in unless they don't want to, if that makes sense. Like if you don't want to grow in this field, you're not going to grow. But if you want to grow, you're going to be able to have opportunities to do it. That's awesome. Well, Tony, thanks for taking the time today to explain a little bit about what a DSP is and also how rewarding it can be. I know it's something that we might not all be aware of, you know, potentially maybe depending on where we are in terms of school, but also in our career but it's definitely something that we should maybe consider as an, a future career opportunity. Yeah, and with so many opportunities right now in other agencies and even including ours, this is the time that you can actually choose how much you want to do it. So if you only want to come in every other weekend or you know one or two days out of the, out of the week, those are very helpful to the full-time people who are working 50, 60, 70 hours with some of these individuals. And a, you will, giving someone a break like that can be very, very rewarding um, on both sides. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Tony. Appreciate it.